Thank you, Mr. Fuchs. Thank you so much. Chair Hamadi, on Monday, an 89,000 ton uh, vessel lost power near New York's Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Thankfully, it was guided by tugs to continue on its journey safely. It's just another reminder that these aren't, these aren't one-off incidents. In 1981, the Sunshine Skyway Bridge in Tampa, Florida, uh, collapsed and 35 people uh, were killed. In my state, uh, the Lewis and Clark Bridge is an example of a bridge with just the wooden uh, barriers to protect uh, from a boat strike, but they have deteriorated. So I want to hear from you what other uh, updates you might have for us on this uh, particular incident, what we can do to safeguard vulnerable bridges in the United States, and what is the status of the 1981 recommendations the Coast Guard made after those incidents to try to strengthen the bridges. I'm just going to put a lot on your plate, but you're here for renomination, so I guess it's another uh, test. But uh, again, as the Chief's safety uh, steward for our nation, we need aggressive advocacy as well as it relates to safety fixes. Um, you were last here, we asked you about whether you were getting the information on the Alaska accident and whether you have received that information. You've since updated the committee on that. Um, but any further updates on uh, the challenges you faced in getting information? One of the things that's transpired since you were here is that the ODA expert panel came out with their analysis that there was a disconnect between senior management and those down the line on what the safety culture actually is. Um, what can NTSB do to further examine the state of the safety culture to make recommendations uh, to us uh, as we continue to move through the challenges of making sure that aviation safety, the FAA, and the oversight is done correctly? So sorry to throw a lot at you, but that's why, we're nom why you're nominated for a second term. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll start with the update on Baltimore. We've come, uh, conducted a number of interviews. We've interviewed the pilots, and I'm going to make sure, if you don't mind, I'd like to consult my notes to make sure that I stick with the facts. Uh, we've co uh, conducted interviews with the pilots, the second officer, who was the man on watch at the time, the master on the bridge, the chief engineer, the third assistant engineer, the helmsman, the bosun, the chief officer who was off watch, second officer, second officer who conducted pre-departure uh, checks, second assistant engineer, electrician, oiler, and three U.S. Coast Guard watch standers at the command center, uh, and received tugboat operator statements, and we're continuing to conduct interviews. Uh, most people don't realize we're actually still on scene. Our investigative team is on the vessel as we speak. Uh, we downloaded the VDR, the voyage data recorder on scene, and then we removed the VDR uh, in order to download uh, the past 30 days in our lab to learn from that. Uh, we formalized uh, parties to the investigation. I'm pleased to say that Grace, Grace Ocean and Synergy have become parties to our investigation, as well as the U.S. Coast Guard, Maryland Transportation Authority, and the Association of Maryland Pilots. We have had the manufacturer uh, of, of uh, equipment in the engine room uh, to look closely at the electrical power system. Uh, we're continuing to look at that. Uh, we've asked for additional assistance from the manufacturer who returned from overseas this week with experts to look at the circuit breakers. Uh, in addition to that, our Office of Highway Safety Team is really focused on peer protection, looking at the original bridge design and how it would be built today under today's standards. I expect, uh, regardless of some uh, erroneous press report from Bloomberg, that our preliminary report will not be out until the first week of May. We are still on scene collecting information. Uh, we have a lot of work ahead. Uh, there is a lot we've learned, uh, but I will say that we have issued recommendations going back to uh, 1979, really 1976, but 1979 uh, and 1981 to the U.S. Coast Guard uh, to look at the type of vessels and shipping in waterways across the United States, the volume of traffic, and peer protection. Uh, the U.S. Coast Guard at the time uh, stated that they did not have the authority to do that, so it was never done. They did do a review of the types of peer protection out there, but uh, 
not on specific areas. Uh, so with that, I can answer additional questions on that. I'm sure there are a number of areas you'd like to delve into, but we have a lot of work to do still on this investigation and happy to provide any more information on that. Maybe if I get it a second round, but if you could address the aviation issue. Yeah, so uh, we are in Renton this week. We're back in Renton and we're doing uh, interviews uh, of Boeing and the Federal Aviation Administration this week. Uh, we, the records don't exist that we're looking for, uh, which is a, what we would call an escape from normal process. And so uh, we are looking at other instances uh, where the door, uh, a door plug was opened and closed to make sure that those records are available and we're looking at how this happened. Uh, what I will say is Boeing has been a party to many of our investigations. Uh, and they are, play a key role here. I don't think there's anyone at Boeing from Dave Calhoun down that doesn't want to know what happened here. They want to know and they want to fix it. And we're there to help. Uh, but we're also there to look at what more can be done, what the safety culture is, what the safety management system is. It's relatively new and how that can be improved and their quality management system. So we do have a lot of work to do do. Uh, I will say you asked about one of the tools we could use. We don't know if we're going to yet. It's a little early to tell. Uh, but one tool we could use uh, is safety culture survey. We just issued a survey with the help of Norfolk Southern to their entire workforce, almost 20,000 employees. And we're, it's an anonymous survey to talk to learn about safety culture. The leadership at Norfolk Southern also wants to know. We're getting a great response and we could do that here. And, and why wouldn't you? Just uh, I, I, I don't want to get ahead of our investigators. They're still collecting information and that's something that they need to pursue. Okay. And, and on this case, you're saying in this case, records don't exist, but you have other records that show when door plugs were opened and closed. There are other instances where that kind of uh, repair was documented. There, there are other instances where that work would occur. We still have to review all those instances to see if that was documented. Okay, so you don't know whether those were documented yet or not? Not yet. Okay, thank you. But we do have the information. Senator Cruz. Uh, 